Women of Reddit, what are some things you would recommend to men to be better boyfriends? Surprised her sometimes by remembering something you shared, and calling back to it. I have a bad memory, so I write down in my journal my special memories with the girls I'm intimate with. Girls. Hey honey. Uh, was it you by any chance, that I saw the eclipse with last year? Or was I still dating Emily then? Affirm your affection for them by saying nice things, or qualities you like about them. You're so. I love that you do, that anything that shows your reassurance, that they are the best. Got it. Thank you very much anything else, smiley face. But I had a boyfriend who did that too much. It became annoying, and came across as fake. Just be yourself from the beginning. Always be appreciative and thoughtful. Peace emoji. So many conflicting responses in this thread, I think I'll just stick to my traffic cone. Hugs and affection with no ulterior motive. Sometimes I like to be held without feeling, like he's wanting to duck me. Maybe he didn't want to f*** you before the cuddling. But doing so turned him on and well. This definitely happens sometimes. Not my fault your body feels sexy. It's your fault for being damn fine. My god, the replies to this comment are astounding. Is it so hard for some people to accept that it's not cool to get sexual every time your girlfriend wants to cuddle? Well, based on my experience hanging out with a large number of heterosexual couples, this particular issue is like a major source of friction in the relationships between men and women. Men who frequently feel spontaneous desire and pretty close to universally seem to want to have sex more often than their female partners do, often feel frustrated, dissatisfied, rejected, or even like they are being made to feel skeezy or ashamed of what's a pretty natural desire. For their part, women who desire sex less often than their partners do, often feel like they are pressured or being hit on in a stressful way that makes desire even more difficult to achieve. Sometimes it triggers this sense that men who want to have sex with them have ulterior motives, or don't respect them, or are looking to take advantage in some way. For some reason, I think these conversations get really difficult to have if they are gendered. I think it triggers a feeling that many men have of being constantly criticized and rejected by women, or on the contrary the feeling that many women have that men are constantly trying abuse or take advantage of them and suddenly you start having a conversation about two dimensional archetypes as opposed to the fully fleshed out human experiences that we actually want to talk about. A how are you? Text and a thinking about you. Text etc goes a long way. You know reverse card. No you. Honestly, get excitable. Nothing kills a conversation like when a man tries to look cool and not jeek out when they want to. Seeing a dude get excited over their interests is adorable. If you never show how excited you are about a hobby slash subject slash interest, you know you'll be getting socks for Christmas. Jokes on you. My boyfriend's favorite gift is new socks. Clean up after yourself. For God's sake, clean up after yourselves. I actually have this theory that the back quote clean up after yourself narrative is half the problem. Cleaning up after yourself, if the absolute minimum anyone should be doing. What's more helpful and less talked about it maintenance cleaning. Sweeping outside, mopping the floors, giving the fridge a deep clean, wiping down the light switches and skirting boards, dusting, organizing the laundry room, and cleaning the oven. Putting your own socks in the hamper isn't impressive. If you're not emptying the bathroom bin, giving the linen cupboard a declutter, or taking off the couch cushion covers to give them a wash from time to time too, then it means someone else is doing all of this while also cleaning up after themselves. Don't clean up after just yourself. Do some of the other stuff too. You, no joke, have put into words what I have never known how to. Now if only I could tell my husband this six years in and I'm still working on just putting socks in the hamper. OMG. I honestly feel like being a good boyfriend is very subjective. Of course you want to do all the broad, good person stuff like being invested and supportive of her life, being kind etc. But get to know her, find out what she likes and what she appreciates. What's her love language? What are the small things that can really take things to the next level for your relationship? What triggers her or makes her upset? What are her turn on slash turn offs? Pay attention, get to know the person you're dating, and invest in them. Smiley face. 
Well actually that's why I ask a bunch of questions of what she loves and dislikes and what helps and what doesn't I love discovering more about women they truly are amazing. Honestly the fact that you ask this at all shows how dedicated and good of a person you are. Your concern and dedication is way better than most of the rest of the planet. I may hang out with your friends like one of the guys, or play video games like one of the guys, but I'm not one of the guys. I'm your girlfriend. Give me attention outside of hanging with your friends, do things with me other than what you like to do with your friends, and spend quality time with me away from your friends. Not as a special treat, not as a holiday surprise, but as a normal part of our relationship. OMG this is really speaking to me. As a woman. My last BF broke up with me because he felt as if I didn't want to hang out with his friends. I did. I just didn't want to all the time. When I commented we never had date nights anymore, he freaked out. I thought I was asking for too much. Oh man. Hopefully you'll be the one to end it. If another guy starts acting like that you're better off without that one. Just hug her for no reason sometimes. Edit. Thanks for my first award and all the upvotes. Love your faces. Yes. If she's a hug person, random hugs, plus little kisses on the cheek slash forehead slash shoulder, are so super cute. Sometimes I'll hear running, then my husband will launch himself through the door of whatever room I'm in. Give me a hug and a kiss, then run away again. The hug rocket has reached the station. Affirmations and validation work well. Sorry I'm semi stupid what does that mean? You're not stupid you just haven't encountered this yet. Example validation. Your feelings make sense. It's okay to be mad slash sad slash hurt by that. Or I don't think I understand. Can you help me understand what you mean? Validation works when built on the premise that everyone's behavior is based on some kind of rationality. It makes sense to them. No one does stupid or bad things on purpose. When you take time to understand how they perceive something, you will often be able to validate their emotions Oh, I understand why you would feel that way. Once validated, people are generally more open to alternatives. Example affirmation. I like you for the person you are you are good. I love you, even when you're not perfect. You are good. I love you, even when you're not perfect. You trying to get the dude in trouble or something? Smiley face. Just take a moment to reflect on what conversations you're having and what you're bringing to them. I know there's this idea that your partner is the person you can vent to, but is that all you're doing? Try to be mindful that your partner also has difficult times. Are you as available to listen to them as they are for you? Do all or even most of your conversations turn into a back and forth of complaints about work slash traffic slash etc. Are those complaints really worth the time you're dedicating to them? I recently suggested to my boyfriend that, hey, let's make the better no complaining zone. I brought it up, because every single night I would find myself just laying in the dark rolling my eyes as he went on and on about the same issues with the same cowalkers every single night. Even nights when he didn't work, would end up this way. Now we have a rule of if this is really something that you want to talk about right this moment, we'll go sit on the sofa and talk. It gives you a moment to just consider if it's really that big of an issue or not. What he's found is that usually it's not worth it, and I've seen a positive change in him. He seems happier now that he's not dwelling on small stuff. Edit, I super heartily commend many of your self-awareness and ability to take a moment to consider the impact your actions have on the people you care about. Stop caring about your looks and just try to be more hygienic. For real you people care too much about how you look, and you smell awful. Example being horrible breath. You can take my garlic bread from my cold, dead hands. But even then, I would have glued it to my cold, dead hands. Explain how you feel. We want to know what you're feeling. Oh man. Does this ever drive me crazy? I wish guys could just say what they're thinking sometimes. What if it's something women find unattractive? Like insecurity. I hear all the time that women want men to open up emotionally, but it's been my experience that showing weaknesses will not go well. If you go blurting it all out on the first date it could be a turn off, but as part of a long term healthy relationship you are allowed to be human and have real feelings. Talk to your partner, share any problems you have, and work on them together. Being scared to be vulnerable to someone shows a lack of trust. 
And if being vulnerable to someone provokes a negative reaction it shows their immaturity, not yours. Long term it's just not healthy to bottle all those feelings up.